All right, I got asked to do a quick tutorial for a uh, gas companion um, setup, which is pretty well documented and, and it changes as time goes on. So, I mean, this video won't be relevant forever, but I'll do my best to make it useful. Um, so first of all, start open whatever project you want. I'm choosing top down. Most people do third person, but I've done a bunch of them. So I'm doing something else now. And once I get to the abilities, it'll probably make it a little bit more fun because point and click can be really easy to program comparative to doing a bunch of vector math. Um, okay. That's just adding a asset manager feature. All right, so first of all, I always try to go over this with everybody I meet because a lot of people don't know about it. Um, hierarchy is extremely important to everything that you do, uh, especially characters. So right off the start, I'm going to show what's called a size map. This is something I try to show it to as many people as I possibly can, as well as the other thing that I like to make people turn on. Go to your editor preferences and type in frame rate, and it'll say show frame rate and memory. This is very useful to have because it does show you your in-engine use of your frame rate and memory, which isn't always accurate um, for the memory because the memory is running your in-editor memory that's being used, not your package memory, but you st should still keep this fairly low. If this starts to get near something like 16 giga or 16,000 megabytes, you are in the red. That is a bad area. You do not want to be there. Any sort of like huge memory pull like that is not going to go well because uh, consoles only have 16 gigabytes of virtual memory and that's not changing anytime soon from what it seems because the PlayStation 5 still has that. So being that there's a memory limitation, you need to keep this kind of stuff in check. Um, and that kind of boils down to the size map stuff. So this is the disk size. Um, more accurately, this is the uncompressed disk size of this file or unbaked size, I would say. So if I was to go into here and change all of these texture sizes inside of Unreal without doing it destructively, I would say, which is like make, physically making them smaller in, inside of the engine. Uh, but if I just go into here and like open up this texture, oops, let's go back here. If I find this texture here, if I was to change the max size in game right here and it, and it reflects right here, it's actually not going to reflect properly on this size map until you actually bounce the or bake the game down. Like once you package it, then it'll actually have the proper size. But in this in this disk size, it's not always an accurate representation. The memory size is something you have to be concerned about because this is like the persistent memory that's being used in game whenever you use this thing. So something like a character does have persistence, and if this number is very high and your characters are existing. It's going to cost you a lot so it's not a good thing um but the reason why proper hierarchy is so important and the start of this whole video <clears throat> is we're going to go create child class uh, and we'll call this bp player character for now and then we're going to change this one to base character and we're going to go into our base character go to our mesh Clear out our mesh, clear out our animation blueprint, because those are the two things that we immediately don't want. I'll explain why in a second. Um, so with those out of the picture, uh, we want all of our characters to, in this example anyway, I want all my characters to have GSC modular character feature, because this gives them the ability system component, and I'm not doing this example on the player state. Somebody else can do that. It's a different, different setup, different reasons why you do it. I'm not going to bother. So that adds the ability system component, but there's no events here. You don't really know when anything happens to this. And that's why MK created the GSC core component, which is kick ass. Because this thing allows you to have all of these events on damage, on health, on stamina change, everything like that. And even something as simple as on attribute change, you throw a switch on this thing. Uh, all of a sudden, this is an incredibly powerful node that you can attach uh, different things to. So. If I wanted to do a UI update or whatever, I can do them off of this. And this is like very, very useful for sending messages and values and everything that you need through that. So highly recommend using this core component and uh, thinking outside the box with it because there's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Um, so that's that. Then we're going to go to 
this and we're going to start by actually we don't want to add the uh, uh, attributes on the base character because I want my player character to have different attributes per player character perhaps maybe one character has different starting stats than the other uh, this is where I would typically add granted effects that are going to apply to everybody so in the future when I do something like stamina regeneration then it will be in here as well as a granted effect uh, the stamina regeneration on spawn uh, I'll leave that on base characters but I'm gonna do that in a future video because I'm not gonna worry about it right now um, and then the player character and now you can see that he's empty uh, doesn't have a mesh assigned so we, first thing we want to do assign our mesh assign our animation blueprint so now we have a player character um, probably at the same location as me yep okay and then now we can add our attributes so in here I'm just going to choose GSC attribute set for the start if you want to do more advanced attributes in the future you do that go here choose attribute metadata open up my player stats um, this is where I start adding rows. Now, just for simplicity's sake, I go to this. This is actually the setup do documentation, which is exactly what I'm basically following. I've just memorized it from years of working with this system. So, there is the line. Talks about the attributes. Data tables right here. So, GSC attribute dot max health or whatever so i just copy this to make it easier for myself in here paste that change the value to 100 yep. another one yeah. Yeah. so and so on and so forth you know if you want to add Stamina. Might as well just get it all out of the way right now. Most of my examples will be fantasy examples, so I'm just going to add mana and max mana. Or, you know. go through and change all their values to whatever you want I'm gonna choose 100 okay that's done now when my player character spawns he's going to have these stats and this is the attribute set eventually apparently MK has plans to make this into blueprint stuff so that's going to be really, really crazy. Um, but until then, we'll just deal with it as it is. So that's good. Next, you want to go to your top-down or your player controller of whatever sort you have. If you don't have one, make one. Player controllers are very useful, and most people don't use them, and they very much should. Um, if you read Ex Epic's documentation, they're basically meant for controlling input on things that are, again, applied to all characters. So... If all of your characters have the same movement very like movement functionality, like top down will more than likely, then that should exist on your player controller. Period. So uh, the caveat to a player controller, I suppose, is that you're um, if you're on a dedicated server. I don't believe that a dedicated server has reference to a um, player controller because they're not a player but they definitely don't have reference to a player camera manager, which is sort of related, as you can see right here, to the player controller. So I've had some <clears throat> headaches from that, which I've had to work around, but I wish Epic was a little bit more clear as to why they have these classes, because they just kind of are like, they're a thing and they're good and you should use them. And you're like, why? Because we're Epic and we're never going to tell you how to properly use stuff. Um, so that's in there now, and then you want to go and change your player controller to GSC player controller again as per documentation. That's done. I don't need to create a hierarchy with my player controller because you shouldn't really ever have any big object references in your player controller as it is. There should never, I've never had an instance where I've had to have a variable that exists in my player controller that's large. 
more than likely that would be an object reference. So, you know, don't do it if you don't need it. Um, then you want to make a player state. I'm not going to choose this one because I don't want my ability system component to exist on my player state. And if you do choose this, you can't have it at the same time that you have your ability system component in your character because it will conflict and not like you. So don't do that. Choose one or the other and you can change it down the line, but if you do change it down the line, it's like a little bit of work to take your abilities out and put them on the player state and do the modification. Uh, things like AGR will use this BP player state specifically for like inventory and stuff. So I just kind of by habit create one because you should have a player state anyway, instead of using the default one that comes with this game mode that we're about to switch out. Because I believe that's the last thing on the checklist here. Um, so same character, except... to use the base character instead or the player character instead let me see change to bp player state and oh i guess i don't no that's the spectator class what am i doing that one i don't have to change because i have i just reparented it anyway that one is just a new class hud class can stay the same their character the same uh, open up my top-down controller because typically I don't know I mean everyone can probably do this differently and I might get corrected on this as I'm saying this but uh, widget. Uh, I do all my HUD management or, or widget management through the player controller instead of on the player because the player doesn't actually have communication directly with like uh, widgets and, and the HUD. The player controller is the intermediary for the HUD, so it makes more sense to me to have the events to do with communication with the HUD or the interface in general existing on the player controller, but I might get corrected on that. I'm not sure. So we'll do this. We'll add that to viewport. Um, that looks a little different. That one, I think, is the one I want. Let's see. Where do you say your head stuff? Right there, yeah, player screen. Look that up. Now, without having tested anything, because I'm pretty sure I did it right anyway, I basically created a player character from, that's a child of this. This became the modular character through here. We added the GSC core component. We, uh, on the player character, um, let's go into it now. Uh, on the player character, we added attributes. We created an attribute set. And then the player state doesn't have anything on it, but we made it and we're using it. Top down character, or the top down controller got reparented and has this um, slight functionality added and the game mode got updated with the new variables that's it now when I hit play I should have a health bar with the three variables full or the three uh, stats full and uh, the main reason now let's talk about this really quick why I did the hierarchy thing save everything because that save definitely makes a big difference whether it's actually referencing properly and then when I hit the size map, you can see that my base character is now only 29.9 kilobytes. And my memory size is 3.2 kilobytes. So when I need to reference this thing, I just made it significantly smaller, you're about to see. And it's because the size map, once you include the mesh, so this is what you never want to cast to your player character class. That is a cardinal sin. Um, inside of here, you have your player character, and that's where your mesh exists. This mesh is 177 megabytes of disk size. And even the amount of memory on your memory size is 70 megabytes just from your mesh existing. So as soon as you cast to that, it's like an unnecessary, you're getting this because of no reason. Because you can still get your skeletal mesh from a base character by doing like a, uh, you know, get component by class. It's an extremely useful function. And you can get a skeletal mesh or whatever you want. And there's no casting involved in this. And this is actually a really cheap function. 
as long as again you're not grabbing it from a damn blueprint class so um much better if you do that and uh yeah now i'm gonna hit play and i should have all those things like i said perfect uh if i do the debug function which i don't actually use i use a slightly different debug from the one mk provides but you can see all of the uh, values are correct here now and stuff and when i do another video i'll do it with uh, stamina regeneration we'll do jumping um, i'll show a proper implementation for how to do jump um, and then we'll just go from there and uh, if you have any questions or want to suggest future future gas videos go ahead i mean if it's really advanced i'm probably not going to take the time to do it because i just i'm strapped as it is but but I will take the time to help people when I can. And uh, the next video I'm planning is gonna be an AGR uh, gas companion video that'll also show off uh, blueprint property mapping and how you do that, which is a simple C++ modification, but it allows you to have a tremendous amount of power between those two because gas abilities um, can control states within your animation graph. So a uh, simple example of this would be you use ADS and while you're aiming down the sights, it's going to send a modification tag to your animation blueprint to add the aiming um, pose, for example, or, or whatever. Like there's lots of different ways you can use it. So we'll go over that in the future, but uh, I think that's good for this video. And uh, yeah, post comments and share. Thanks.